Hi, my name is François Donzé. I am an HP technical consultant and today I will present an introduction to the management of storage devices supporting the platform level data model for Redfish device enablement, also called PLDM for RDE. PLDM for RDE is a standard from the Distributed Management Task Force. This standard allows Redfish clients to receive HTTP responses from RDE-capable devices. In a nutshell, the Redfish client sends an HTTP request to the Redfish service of a managed server. The request is translated and forwarded to the device which answers it. When this dialogue is complete, the management controller sends back the response to the client. In this presentation, I will use the Postman API platform to access a remote ILO. The first thing to do is to create a Redfish session before being able to browse resources and properties. ILO sessions are created by sending a POST request to the session service with a JSON body containing a username and a password. Upon success, the Redfish service returns a session token and a session location in the headers of a response. This information can be extracted and stored in Postman variables and then used to authenticate future requests or terminate the session. The token variable should be used as the value of the XAuth token header of the HTTP request. In this section, we will browse the storage device collection and look at one RDE-capable device. The Redfish storage collection contains the exhaustive list of storage devices present in the system, with the exception of USB stick devices. In the ILO Redfish service implementation, RDE-capable devices have an identifier started with DE. When you query an RDE-capable device, the response contains general information like the status of a device and the list of possible actions. In addition, it contains the entry points of the various subsystems. For a storage device, you will get the URI of the embedded controllers, the physical drives, and the logical volumes. The last part of this presentation explores deeper the Redfish data model of an RDE-capable storage controller. As explained previously, underneath the entry point of RDE-capable storage devices, you can view the properties of a particular controller present in the collection. This particular HPE Smart Array controller shows the supported device and controller protocols. It shows as well some cache summary information, PCIe interface details, and supported red types. In the headers of this request response, you obtain the list of allowed operations supported by the controller. In addition, those headers contain the link to the schema describing all the resources and properties that can be supported by the controller. In this particular example, we learn from the schema that it is possible to modify the consistency check rate person property. This property is part of a controller rates object. In addition to the entry point of the controller details, the RDE-capable storage device resource list contains the entry point to the logical volume collection. The body of the response contains the collection of already created volumes. From there, you can view the properties of the members of the collection, including the list of physical drives composing them. You can easily access the drive's properties by following the provided links. In addition to a detailed explanation of the Redfish session creation, this presentation demonstrated the simplicity of a storage device Redfish tree when the DMTF platform level data model for Redfish device enablement protocol is implemented in both 
the device and the management controller. PLDM facilitates the management of storage or network devices and it makes firmware updates much easier as well. For more information on PLDM, read the different blog posts in the HPE Developer Portal. Thank you.